Hey guys, welcome back. So this big behemoth is a John Deere 755 track loader. So the story on this machine is the lady that owns this, her husband passed away, I think it was about 20 years ago. And so this thing has been sitting that whole time. I don't know if it runs, she doesn't know either. The only thing she can remember from her husband is that it needed a fuel tank or something like that. But the first thing that I do notice is the top of the exhaust is open so I'm sure water has gotten down into the engine and most likely seized the turbo or rusted the pistons solid but I am feeling kind of optimistic so I am going to try and get this running and hopefully purchase it it's in actually decent shape I mean if you look at these sprockets and tracks there's like virtually no wear on them. I mean, these are in really good shape. The track chain doesn't have any wear at all on it. It's mainly just kind of rusty from sitting this whole time. However, with anything that sits a long time, hydraulic lines get pretty pooched and uh, will probably blow the first time you try and use them. Looking a little closer, I see that some of these pins have been just welded in. But the other ones look to be in really good shape, so I don't I don't know why they did that. For example, this pin looks to be in really good shape and it's not welded. I guess this arm might have broken off on the other one and they just welded it solid. Same thing with this one here. So if you look at this side of the machine, you can see there are some pretty good oil leaks coming out of these hydraulic cylinders. These lines on this side aren't as bad. They are actually decent compared to the other ones this thing does have some massive counterweights on it so the lady said she would sell this thing to me for basically scrap money however the only way i can move this thing is by getting it running any other way would be a real challenge because there's no way to get a low boy in here also i'm sure a lot of the stuff is pretty locked up now in some cases you can pull the sun gear out of here but I'm not sure if you can do that on this machine the way this final drive is made the size of these lift cylinders are just enormous so this bucket looks to be in pretty good shape it's kind of sunk in the ground here so if we look at this operators cab <laughs> these armrests and controls are oh this one's working but all these controls seem to be locked up so you can tell a lot of these panels were taken off. This seat panel is all loose along with these bottom covers here. You see somebody took the bolts out of this, so I'm not sure exactly what they were looking for. But yeah, <laughs> it looks like we got mouse nests and all kinds of nests and pine straw all under here. That one's kind of locked up in the middle there. Let's see what this thing has for hours. Oh wow, if that is correct, that is really low hours. 1,467 hours. It's hardly anything for a machine like this. Let's see what this diesel looks like. There's a little bit in there. It smells pretty old, but should work. Now she was saying that it needs a new fuel tank, but to me it looks really good down in there. The only thing I'm seeing is maybe a slight bit of surface rust right on the edge there, but everything else looks good. The fuel tank looks pretty good. I got a whole ring of keys here, and I know this is a John Deere key. And pretty sure this is the John Deere key. Let's try it. <laughs> what do you know? It's the first key. I believe this is probably your start button then. Turn the ignition on and we start it. All right, this is probably our shutoff, but it is completely seized up along with all these other controls. Let's see if I can free some of this stuff up. that to free up all 
There we go. Put some uh, WD-40 on that. Get this. All right, so this is a 24 volt system. So I got two jump packs here and um, let's see what that does. Let's see if anything turns on on the dash. Okay, yeah, we got volts. Lights are coming on here. I'm just gonna tap it. It's just clicking. Try that again. Seems like the engine's locked up, but we will double check everything. Let's get some of this pine straw out of here. Don't want to fire in case anything does happen. Good look at this side of the engine for the most part it looks pretty good here's our water separator our fuel filters i might just try and see if i can turn this fan but it seems like it is locked up solid i know this isn't the right way to do it but i'm just going to give it a little try nope that thing ain't budging Looks like there might have been a fire down in there at one time. Some of them tubes are all melted. while we're here let's take a look at this coolant oh, look, look at that says January 2003 so that is uh 21 years ago so yeah they weren't lying when they said this thing's been sitting here at least 20 years that coolant doesn't look good there's none in it and it's all it's like it's rusty down in there One down.
Yeah, I would say that thing was uh, definitely holding water there. There's still water down in there. Yeah, that thing is... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's any hope for this thing. Yeah, not having high hopes. I'm pretty sure those exhaust manifolds and everything is completely full of water and seized up. That turbo is locked up solid. Yeah. Thing is not moving. Not a good sign. Yep, you can see lots of water pouring out right there. all of them. Now we can kind of see down in the exhaust ports and it's not looking good. It is full of crud and everyone is like that. See this one is like it. That one is like it. They're all pretty much full of water. So that really kind of sucks. So unfortunately, the engine on this machine is a little bit too far gone with all the water and rust. So I don't think I'm gonna end up buying this machine. However, I don't wanna leave here empty handed. And there is this nice little Case 450. I believe this is like a 1970s model, somewhere around there. Now the undercarriage and everything looks really good on it. And it does have a six-way blade so that's a plus also the hours on it are really low if that's the original hour meter it only has 854 hours which is basically like brand new now obviously there are a lot of issues the hydraulic lines are completely pooched I mean like these are really bad I'm pretty sure if this thing cranks up that these things are gonna blow pretty quickly. And all of them are like that. There's these lines right here going to the cylinder for the six-way blade on here. And also these cylinders are pretty scratched up. It looks like there's a good bit of wear on those. The undercarriage is in really good shape, except for the spring kind of rusty. Here's some brand new, looks like track rollers. So somebody has already started working on this. It looks like they took the seat off and started draining 
some of the fluids on it. I think the uh, diesel tank was drained. And from what they said, it did have a good bit of light rust in it. Yeah, so I do believe they uh, cleaned the diesel tank out. So what's cool about this machine is it has a torque converter style transmission. So I don't think there's any like steering clutches or anything like that. It is all operated by a uh, torque converter style transmission like on a uh, backhoe. Here's all our controls for the blade and all those seem to be fine. And all these forward and reverse controls seem fine as well. So nobody has tried starting this machine in over 20 years. It's been sitting here for a very long time. There was a lot of brush around it. Somebody had already cut it all down. There was some trees growing through it. One good thing about it is that the exhaust is routed in a way to where water can't get down it. And also it's really good for using in the woods so nothing can break the exhaust off with this Looks like a homemade ROP system. So one thing the owners already did do is they replaced these fuel filters and these fuel lines going to the fuel tank. And they did that when they cleaned the uh, fuel tank out. And that's all they did to it. They haven't done anything else. So we'll go ahead and just check some of the basics on it. But we'll just see. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty black, but it is on the correct level. Cool, that looks like and there is none so that's not too good I'll have to get that filled up make sure there's no leaks in it let's get this breather cover off bugs down in there. That filter doesn't look too clean. It says new at 800 hours in 2004. So yeah, that was 20 years ago. And about 54 hours ago. Got a brand new key here. Let's just see if anything happens. Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. I wonder if this thing has a master switch somewhere. So I follow these cables and it leads me to this master switch right here. So let's try. So it can turn. It almost seems like it's locked up or it takes a certain type of key i'm not sure maybe it takes a different key i'm gonna go through these keys that i got and see if something will fit better in there so i don't have a key for this that's gonna fit right so i'm just basically putting these terminals together so now when i hold that ratchet against these terminals now when i turn it i'm getting a little click from the starter so power is not flowing to this master switch. So for now, I think I'm just gonna connect these two together. So I've been messing with this switch a little bit more and I did get it to turn, but it doesn't stay like that. There's a spring in there that turns it back. So I guess you have to turn this while you turn the starter or something, I, I don't know. It's, it's a weird type of switch. I'm just going to temporarily hook this up right here. Okay, so now we at least got constant power. So 
So it looks like our solenoid is clicking. So this is actually for this uh, intake heater right here. So the positive wire comes off of the starter right here. So they basically use the same power wire to heat this while you're starting it. And there is a lot of crap all over this thing. So it sounds like our starter Bendix or our starter solenoid is not working right now. So I'm gonna try just tapping on the starter while I hit the key. Well, unfortunately, I think the starter is fried because I've tried everything and it is not doing anything at all. Yeah, something's going on with it. Water probably got down in here and seized it up or something. I did disconnect the battery, by the way. I gotta move this line. in here so while I'm in here I'm just gonna see if this motor spins over at all and yes it does it's free so that's good that spins over easy too all right that's good like the little piece of felt hasn't been greased in a long time. <laughs> I'm not seeing high hopes for this thing. Oh yeah, I had a feeling this thing was bad. You can see right there, there's a lot of rust in it. And I'm pretty sure all that rust came in through right here.
Here is our commutator and our armature here. See if we can maybe clean that up. That looks pretty bad in there though. All right, we are back with a new starter. However, it looks a lot different. This one's supposed to be an upgraded starter from this old Delco Remney starter. Um, this one has three bolt holes and this one only has two. Let's just kind of test fit it and see if it'll actually fit in there. It does fit pretty good. However, our positive terminal right there is basically touching the frame. It really needs to be like notched out right here. I don't know if that's gonna work or not like that. It's awfully close. So before we go notching the frame, let's make sure that this thing works. So let's get it temporarily just kind of hooked up here. Here we go, let's see if it works. Well, the solenoid is clicking, but no starter. Came with this grounding lug, but I don't think it's gonna fit with that frame there. So let's just ground this thing and see if that does anything. Still nothing. So I'm guessing all you guys that have these Case 450s have been screaming at me this whole time because I could not see this start button up here because it was down like this. But I just got to looking in here to see if there was any electrical safety switches. And I saw two wires down there that led to this little push button switch here. And so I got to looking and there's a little push it right there and right on the top of it it says push to start so as soon as I turn the key on there and push that button there it goes all right let's notch a little spot out so this wire doesn't hit the frame wires are just a hair too short. Still hitting the frame down here with these wires. And yeah, so it looks like I'm gonna have to notch this frame out more. All right, let's try this again.
All right, that might just work. And as you can see, now I got some clearance under there. It's kind of a shame that I had to cut the frame, but this frame is super thick, so I don't think I did any kind of structural damage to it. All right, guys, let's see what happens. Gonna switch on. Woohoo! That thing turns over fast. All right. I'm not gonna do any more. I wanna check, make sure all the fluids are good and see if we can get this uh, diesel primed and then we'll try starting it. Just gonna go ahead and check this hydraulic fluid. We have a nice wasp nest. Oh, we are bone dry in there. Let's get this thing filled up. That thing is bone dry in there. I don't know what happened to all the hydraulic fluid. I'm guessing we probably most likely have a busted line somewhere. The tank looks good in there though. And I completely forgot to bring a funnel. Some weird colored hydraulic fluid. Five gallons. Let's see if that even did anything. I got it on there. I think that's good enough. All right, so since we had to change out all these fuel lines, it's going to take a while for this whole system to prime. And the proper way would be to undo the top of the injectors and let all the air bleed out that way. But I'm just going to go ahead and just spray a little bit of ether in there just to see if it will pop off because I don't want to burn the starter up by trying to push the diesel all the way through all these lines. So. There we go. <laughs> it cranked up. That's a good, that's a good sign. I'm gonna run it for just a little bit more and uh, see if we can get some of this fuel at least primed up to the lines there. thing is a runner. Well, it looks like we got some fluid squirting out of here. It looks to be hydraulic oil. And I think it's coming out of this line here. Oh, no, it looks like the hydraulic leak is most likely coming from this hose here because we have it sprayed all down here. I'm going to start up just for a second and uh, take a look at that line. Well, no, it's not coming from that hydraulic line. It is actually coming from the line that I first suspected. It's squirting right out of this line that's going up to the torque converter gauge here. I'll probably have to take this cover off and maybe I can cut that line and bring it up a little bit. So it looks like our line 
it's coming out of the transmission right here. So if I could just put a little cap over that and disconnect the line, I think we'll be able to get by for a little while. This whole hose looks like it's got a little melted spots on it, maybe from the heat of the engine. I'm not sure. All right, so I did pick up some of this uh, oil line for the gauge here. So let's go ahead and pull this panel off. All right, so it looks like it's this line that's in question, but there's also another one back here that is pretty kinked, so that one's probably about to go any minute as well. At least that was pretty loose there. Let's pull that old line out. Let's see if we can get this line undone. like no room to work in here. All right, okay, we have our cap and our ferrule here. And now we can get that installed on the gauge. good. I think we're good to get this thing back installed. Alright, let's take a quick look in this diesel tank. Well, it looks decent. I believe it's already been kind of cleaned out a little bit but there's like hardly any diesel in there so let's uh put a little bit of diesel in there so we can go ahead and prime the system Injectors cracked. All right, so I forgot to bring an electric fuel pump, so I'm just going to try something here. See if anything comes out the bottom of this filter here. Okay, yeah, I had pressure in it, so we're getting fuel there. 
Let's try this top filter. Alright, yeah, I don't see anything coming out of there, so I'm gonna put some air in the tank and see if that comes out there. Well, I am not getting any. Oh, there it goes. Just when I spoke. Alright, so we are bled up to there. Alright, let's try this line on the injection pump. I'm getting some residue of fuel. Not much at all there. Yeah. I think we're gonna have to spin the engine over a little bit and see if we can get some fuel coming out of there. These go straight to the injectors from each one of these lines. undo this top cap here this line and see if we're getting any fuel from the fuel filters these fuel lines were clogged up all right we're getting some some fuel and air out of there but man that fuel coming out of that looks really bad Close this top one off. It's got all the air out of it. All right. It does look like we're getting a little bit of fuel coming out of there now. I'm gonna try turning it over again. Let's see if we can get fuel coming out of that injector port or any of these really all right i am seeing a little bit of air bubbles coming out of there but not much well i've been fooling with this thing for a while trying to get it primed but i'm just getting a ton of air coming out of this and no fuel so i really didn't want to run it on any more ether but i think i need to just give it kind of like a prime with it. So let's do that a little bit and see what happens. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get some water in the same. Okay, well that's good. At least it wasn't completely empty. I think most of it just probably evaporated out after these 20 something years. All right, well I did see a bunch of fuel coming out of those. So I think that's all we needed. Let's get these buttoned back up and we'll try and Start it back up on just plain diesel. Diesel fuel, no, uh, no ether. Let's try it again.
guys. That thing fired right up. That is awesome. So before I move any of the hydraulics or anything, I want to at least clean some of this stuff off real quick so I don't completely booger the seals on it. But yeah, that is, that's awesome. The thing cranked up and ran. It was making some kind of weird whining noise at first, and I don't know if the starter had got uh, like locked up with the fly flywheel or something, but it just quit. So I don't know if maybe it was the alternator or the pump or something. I'm not sure, but we were getting good pressure on everything. So I think this thing is ready to try out. Let's get these cylinder rods cleaned off and we'll see if this thing moves at all. So I don't think I need any brakes on this thing, but if I did, these uh, master cylinders on these brakes, yeah, they're, they're pretty pooched. So hopefully I don't need any brakes. There is a lot of stuff under here that needs to be cleaned up. I wish I had a pressure washer with me, but I don't right now. Probably the starter that was making that noise. Well, I'm gonna try tapping on the starter, but I doubt that's gonna do anything. Let me just pull that starter back out. Well, what I'm seeing is not good. That looks like the whole dang gear done flew off this thing. Trying to fish it out of there is gonna be probably next to impossible. All right, guys, I got this camera that I'm going to send down here. Oh, look what we got there. You guys see that? There is the end of our starter. Man, if I had like a magnet on the end of this camera, I could probably get that thing. So, oh, look at them dead roaches. <laughs> Some dead roaches down there with it. Looks like we got a nice dead roach right there. So it's not touching the flywheel. So I mean it would be okay to leave down in there. I'm gonna see if I can maybe hook some kind of magnet onto the end of this. By the way, I got this camera from DXZTOZ, whatever that name is. Uh, they sent me this to try out. I'll put a link in the description if any of you guys want one of these. It's pretty, pretty neat. It has this uh, flexible end to it. It's pretty awesome. Okay guys, so it's about a week later. I didn't have any luck getting that gear off the new starter fished out of there. I hooked a magnet to the front of the camera and it just kept sticking to the sides of the case. And there was just so much grease in there. I almost got it at one point, but it literally fell off right when I was pulling it out. So we ended up rebuilding the old starter and that probably is what we should have done in the beginning. I think it was about $250 to get this rebuilt, but it looks like he did a good job on it. Everything looks pretty good. It's got some new rubber insulators here and new copper line. So let's get this installed and see if it will start up. Okay guys, I believe we are ready to start this thing back up. So last time we started it was over a week and a half ago. So let's see if the fuel system is still bled and is holding its pressure. Let's get it cranked up.
Right, guys this thing is a beast I absolutely love this machine what the main thing I really like about it is the torque converter transmission um, this system works absolutely amazing it's basically just like a backhoe this thing is running perfect there's no issues with it except for some leaks that we have going on which is to be expected you can see this cylinder is dripping and that's going to need to be fixed. However, all of the lines are holding. No hydraulic lines have burst, which is absolutely amazing. Just some uh just you know some seals weeping on some of the cylinders. And they're not even all that bad. I 
figured this one would be pouring out um, fluid, but it's it's not leaking all that bad. And this one here is completely dry. There's absolutely no leaking around it. But yeah, all these lines are amazingly holding up. I, I, I just can't believe that. Who knows how long they will hold up? That's another question, but um, all these are going to go ahead and get replaced. But yeah, it's it's running great. I, I have no complaints with it. It's a great machine. I think I'm going to use it to do a little bit of work around my place. But before then, I think we're going to go ahead and fix a couple more issues on it. We're going to get these lines replaced. Just do some more servicing to it. The uh, final drive and rear transaxle needs servicing most likely. So yeah, if you guys would like to see more videos on this machine, please post in the comments. And uh, I will probably make another video on it. But until then... I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and resurrecting this old beast from the dead. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video. So y'all take care. Later.